Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're doing well. So in this video, we will go over how to create the cheat sheet for VLSM in the networking course. So the first thing you would do is open up an Excel file. And um, at the top, in the first row, you would write uh, in the first column, it, you would write octet. In the second column, you would write binary. In the third, you would write mask. In the fourth, you would write hosts. And then, and, and then in the last one, you would write cider. Okay, now, if we remember from... And this is uh, for IPv4 um, only. So, if you remember from uh, the IPv4 class that we had, uh, an IPv4 address usually has four octets. Okay, and each of those octets have um, eight bits. Okay, so in, in order to represent that, you would write uh, the first octet eight times to represent that the first octet has eight uh, bits. Similarly, you would write two, oops, you would write two, eight times, three, eight times, And then four, eight times as well. Okay. Uh, is this eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So each of these, so this one is the first octet. This one is the second octet. This is the third. And then this is the fourth. Okay. Now, if you remember from the binary to decimal and decimal to binary conversion, each of those bits have a number that we use to represent them, right? So if you remember those numbers, it was something like two, one, two, eight, 64, 32, 64, 32, 64, 32, 1. Okay, and then you would take the same numbers and write them for the other octets as well. So that's your binary. Now for the mask, all you have to do is subtract uh, the binary from the number 256. So 256 minus the num oops, 256 minus the number that's on the left. So 256 minus the binary that is there on the left. It will give you a number, just drag it down until the end of the octets. These are the mask, the subnet mask numbers. Now for the host, we will do it the other way. He will start from one at the bottom. So at the fourth, uh, in the fourth octet, in the last bit, you would write one. And on the second last, you would write two times the number that's below it. So two times the number that's below it, and you would just drag this to the top. Okay, and it will give you the number of hosts that can be available for each of the bits in different octets. Now, for the cider, all you do is you just write slash one at the top, and then you just drag it down until the very end, until 32. Okay, these are your ciders. So this is how you would create the cheat sheet. Uh, let's try it with one of the examples. Okay. So let's take a look here. If we look at, these are the subnet questions that you have in your um, IP addressing workbook. Um, and if we, if we look at this question, we need to figure out the custom subnet mask for this particular problem. The first thing we would do is we would look at the address that is given to us, right? If you remember this uh, from the table that we discussed, this address belongs to class A, okay? because the class A addresses end at 1, 2, 7. And this is below that, so it will be considered as class A. Default subnet mask, if you remember for class A, is nothing but 2, 5, 5, 0, dot, 0, dot, 0. Okay, now in order to figure out the custom subnet mask, what you need to do is you need to look at the number of hosts that are required. 
Now, we require the, these many hosts. The first thing we would look at uh, in the cheat sheet is where can we find a number that satisfies these many hosts? So in the host column, if you take a look at it, this is the, the number that basically satisfies um, these many hosts, right? So the mask that's next to it is 254, and you're supposed to write to that 254 in basically the second octet. So it would look something like this. In the first octet, you would keep it as 255. And in the second octet, you would write 254, and the remaining would be just 0, 0. OK? We'll skip these and we'll try to find the number of bits borrowed, okay? In order to find the number of bits borrowed, you need to look at both the default subnet mask and the custom subnet mask. These are just tricks. There are other ways of doing it, but these are tricks you can use to uh, quickly find out the answers. So in order to find out the number of bits borrowed, you need to look at, like I said, the default subnet mask and the custom subnet mask. And you need to figure out which octet or starting which octet, there's a difference. So if you notice, the second octet in both uh, the masks are different. The remaining octets are basically same. 255 is the same here and here, zero, and the zeros are same in both uh, the subnet masks. But the second octet, octet is different. So what you're going to do, you'll go back to your cheat sheet and you'll start counting from, um, yeah, from the top, from the beginning of the second octet until you reach the number 254 in the second octet. So this is the beginning of the second octet. I'll start counting from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is where I find 254. So the number of bits borrowed would be 7. Okay. Now the, uh, the total number of subnets would be 2 to the power uh, number of bits borrowed. In this case, it was 7, so 2 to the power 7, which is nothing but 128. Okay, the total number of hosts are the same, the number that you find here, which is 131072. So I would just write it that way 131072. And then the usable hosts are nothing but the total hosts here minus 1. So you would write 131070. One, okay, now one, uh, those are your usable hosts. Now let's do another problem, which is kind of different. So here, if we look at uh, the number of addresses, uh, sorry, uh, at the network address, you will know that it belongs to the class B. Okay. And so the default would be 255 dot 255. Sorry for the writing. And then 0 dot 0. Okay. Now, in order to find the custom subnet mask, you need to look at the number of hosts. The number of hosts are 15. So here, you would find 15 at this point. But if you were to find out the number of usable hosts, it would be this number here, which is 16, min oops, 16 minus 2, which is 14. So the number of usable hosts that we get at the end with 16 is actually less than what we require. We require 15. If that is the case, what, you were, what you're going to do is you, you'll pick the number of hosts above the one that is actually being satisfied. So in this case, we won't pick 16. We'll pick 32. Okay. So let me just remove this. So here... You will pick 32, and the mask next to it is 2 to, 4, 2 to 4 in the fourth octet. So in the fourth octet, you need to write 2, 2, 4. Okay? And, but here you have a 0, right? And you have 255, five, which will remain the same. So 255 five will be the same here. 
255 will be again the same. But the third one is 0. So instead of writing 0, you cannot write 0. Your subnet mask should be continuous. There shouldn't be a 0 in the middle. So if this is the case, if you get the mask in the other in the other octet and there's uh, there is a zero in between, you would just try it two, five, five. Okay. So now, in order to find the number of bits borrowed, what you're going to look at is which two which octets in this case are z uh, are not the same, are different. So in this case, uh, we look at the default and the custom subnet masks, and we'll see which octets are different. Here, the third and the fourth octet are basically different, right? So you 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 will start counting from the third octet here until you reach two to four in the fourth octet. So this is the beginning of the third octet. I'll start counting from here. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is where I reach 2 to 4 in the fourth octet. So this means I've borrowed 11 bits. Okay. This is nothing but 2 to the power 11. And the number of hosts would be here, 2 to 4, so it's 32. and 32 and this one will be 32 minus 2 which is 30. If you calculate this 2 to the power 11 you would get something 2048 oops 48 which is uh, more than what we require, so it's fine. This is how you can use the cheat sheet to basically solve subnetting questions, okay? Now let's look at one of the actual VLSM questions. So these are the questions that you will gen generally see in your exams and assignments, assessments, whatever it is. These are the questions we are focusing on. If you notice here, you see that you've been given a network and you need to create a VLSM IPv4 addressing scheme for this. So the first thing you would do is you would see, you, you would just take the number. I'm, I'm just gonna do here uh, in the Excel sheet, but you can do it in a paper or anywhere else. So here, the first thing I would write is the network address that I'm provided, so two to, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, slash 24. So here, in this case, the first thing you need to do is write the number of hosts in the descending order. So this is the host column. So the first one would be 60 and the second one would be 28. Okay. Now, the second thing is you need to figure out the CIDR. The CIDR is nothing but a prefix or a, a representation for the subnet mask. So how to figure out the CIDR? The same way you would look at 60 and you will see in the host column where is 60 satisfied. So, it's, so 60 is satisfied around here. This is where uh, it would be sufficient. And so the CIDR next to it is 26. So that is your CIDR here, slash 26. 28 is, uh, are the hosts you need. Again, you will look at the hosts column and you will see where it is satisfied. It is basically satisfied here. So you would pick the cider next to it, which is slash 27. Now we're done with the cider. The second thing you need to figure out is the subnet address. Okay. So here for the first network, the subnet address is the same as the one that they give you in the question. So here it would be 220, 10, 10, 0. Okay. For the next one, in order to figure out the uh, subnet address for the next one, you need to look at the CIDR of the previous network. So the previous network here is 20 slash 26. You would go to slash 26 and you will see what is there in the binary column. In the binary column here, you, you have 64 and it shows that it's in the fourth octet. So in the fourth octet, you need to add 64. So it would look something like this, 220, 10, 10, 
64. Okay. And uh, assuming that maybe there, there was a network after this as well, you would, again, to find out the next network, you would look at the previous slide row, which is 27. You would go to 27. In the binary column, you have 32. And it's basically in the fourth octet. So you would write 2, 20, 10, 10. And you will add 32 to the 64 that was already there. So 64 plus 32 is 96. Okay. The next thing would be to figure out the broadcast address. The, the broadcast address is nothing but one is basically it's basically the last address in the addressing scheme for each of the networks. So in order to figure out the broadcast address for any of these subnets, you would look at the next subnet address and just remove one IP address. So this broadcast address would be 220.10.10.63 because this is 64. If you remove one from it, it will become 63. Similarly, this will be 220.10.10. Remove one from the next one, it would be 95. This is why figuring out the next network is or next or the next subnet is um, helpful because it will allow you to figure out the broadcast address uh, easily. Okay. So that is your broadcast address. The next thing is to figure out the first usable IP address. Okay. The first IP is nothing but one I just add one IP or one just add one to the subnet address. So the first IP here would be 220 10 10 1. And here it would be 220 10 10 60. Okay. The last IP is nothing but removing one from the broadcast address. The broadcast is the last address, but it is not usable for hosts. So we need to figure out the last usable IP. So it would be nothing but one a one minus the broadcast address. So it would look something like this: 220, 10, 10, 62. And then here it would be 220, 10, 10, 90, uh, 95, 94. Okay. So that is how you would figure out uh, the how you would do the VLSM for IPv4. Now, for, uh, for questions like these, where you have two red lines, all you would do is you would add a network of two two for each of the red lines. So I have two red lines here. I would add a subnet of two and then another subnet of two. And then I'll just continue it uh, as I was doing the previous um, for, for the previous networks. OK, I hope this is clear. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, this is the cheat sheet method. Again, you don't have to go by it. It's up to you. It's only uh, to make the calculation quicker. Uh, instead of just, you know, calculating it every single time with ones and zeros. And I will also have the other video where you can watch how to do it with the binary calculations and finding the magic number. Um, so whichever way you want to prefer is, is fine by me, as long as you have the correct answer at the end. So thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.